Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, Matt DiNapoli here. Welcome to episode 197 of Snack Minute. I know it doesn't happen that often, but we actually have a new guest to talk about it, talk about a new initiative coming out of Cisco. So welcome to DT, uh, and uh, I can't wait to talk about agency and what you have to talk about here. So uh, Aditi, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself to our Snackers, and uh, then we'll get right into it. All right, yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I'm DT. I'm a senior software engineer with an outshift by Cisco working on Agency, which is an open source collective for agentic developments now owned by the Linux Foundation, which is what I'll be talking about today. And I focus on the backend design and development of our reference application for Agency. Yeah, welcome. So you gave us a little introduction to Agency. Can you dig a little bit deeper into um, what it is, a little bit of how it started and how it ended up with the Linux Foundation. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll start with the why. So teams collaborate and agents need to do exactly that. They need to come together with different domain knowledge, different data sets that they're trained on, and they need to collaborate in order to solve complex business and scientific problems. And for that, they need a collaboration framework um, and a standard one because agents can come from different vendors, they could come from different frameworks, different clouds, they could be on-prem. <laughs> and so, um, you know, they may even belong to different organizations and they could take on different personas. And for, you know, within all this, they they need to come together to solve these complex problems with other agents. Um, and so we want to make sure that they have a common framework. And that's why Cisco Outshift uh, started Agency, um, which is a completely open source collective for interagent collaboration. And basically, in order for this network of agents, right, that are coming together to solve these problems, aka we like to call it the internet of agents, um, to be effective, it needs to be built um, on a foundation of open and interoperable standards, just like our original internet, I know, was built on as well, right? Um, and so that's why everything that we've released with an agency has been open source. And we're, you know, ensuring that it's a space where different players working on the same goal can come together to, to really innovate, to develop and um, kind of maintain this new standard of software that's going to underpin this internet of agents. Um, so just to give an idea of how much we've grown, we have a variety of different partners that have joined this effort. Um, there's actually 75 partners and it has recently graduated to the Linux Foundation. So it's not just Cisco's collective any longer, but it truly belongs to the community where, you know, we still exist as a core member and contributor. Um, this is really exciting. And, you know, for Cisco, it's a really interesting place to be because um, for me, you know, understanding where Cisco's come from uh, in helping out with standardizations like in IETF and IEEE. Really excited to see us at the forefront of um, agentic engagements. Um, and and you, you kind of keyed on that by saying the Internet of Agents. And I, I like to think that not just our snackers or me and Kareem and you, but we see Cisco as the foundation for um, the Internet activity in the world. Um, and so it it's nice to see that we're um, thinking about how we can help influence the standardization of agent interaction for for years to come, hopefully. <laughs> um, so can you give um, us a little bit of an understanding on how the framework is structured, what developers can do with it? Um, you know, maybe kind of jump in a little bit on what the opportunities are to get started. And to add to that, uh, just just in general, like, what are the, what are the use cases that you're seeing uh, in the market great. today, and how is it how is agency being used? So great questions, um, and I think that to kind of start answering those questions, I did want to talk a little bit about what the different pieces of the puzzle are. Right, so these are the different spaces that we're we're looking at within agentic development, and you know, not just looking at agentic protocols, but also like what is the big picture for this Internet of Agents, right? Uh, so I'll quickly walk through that, and then I'd love to talk about how developers can get involved as well, because this is a developer centric, you know, uh, collective. So we want to make sure. Uh, that our developers are empowered. But to just kick this off, we want to first talk about identity, right? So agents have identity and that identity needs to be documented. So we've um, basically, there's the OASF, the 
open agent standard framework that exists within agency, um, which is actually, fun fact, adopted from OCSF, so which is the highly reputable open cybersecurity standard framework. And so, oh. you know, um, we're not trying to rebuild the wheel, but uh, using what exists and is uh, reputed already um, to kind of build on this new internet of agents. And this is basically a common framework in which you can describe the capabilities and attributes of an agent. So um, what does the agent do? Who built it? Where's the source code? How do I talk to it? Right. So we need to have some kind of standardization around that. That's OASF. So that describes your agent identity. Now, these descriptors, they live within an agent directory. And this is really where all the different um, agent entries are captured. And we've set it up so it's a distributed decentralized service. So you can run this in multiple organizations. Right. So we spoke about this this network of agents, the Internet of Agents. So um, um, it's not just agents maybe within your own organization, but also your agents within other organizations. So you want to make sure the directory is decentralized. And you, with that, it gives you the flexibility to make your directory public. Okay, I want other organizations or people to reach it. Um, and then you can have private as well, right? So only people within my organization can reach it. So um, we set up agent directory like that. Um, and we, we've set it up this way, kind of similarly to a DNS server, right? We all know DNS, uh, you reach out to figure out exactly where a server is. Okay, now agent directory, you reach out to find out exactly where an agent is. So that's a bit of discovery and identity. Um, and then kind of at the syntactic layer, we have something that we call the Agent Connect protocol that we developed in collaboration with Langchain. And in building this, we learned a lot about this layer and we're using these learnings kind of to contribute back to A2A, which is, uh, you know, big industry standard uh, agentic protocol. Uh, and so we're making sure that, again, we're not just looking at our own stuff, but also you know, what's out there? What are the standards? How can we make sure that everything's interoperable in this space? Um, we've got the transport, which is where the rubber really meets the road in terms of taking these agents and these multi-system, uh, multi-agent systems and deploying them onto your internet infrastructure, right? And so that's where we've built out Slim, which is kind of one of our standout services. And Slim is like, it's a mouthful in itself. It's a secure, lo low latency interactive messaging protocol, but it's easier to just call it slim. Um, and if you think about it, um, agentic communication needs to have kind of certain unique attributes, right? It needs to be low latency in order to support things like human in the loop um, or for agents to communicate in a multimodal way, right? Like we can talk to agents via pictures, photos, you could be sending your WebEx messages in there. Um, so it needs to be low latency and it obviously needs to be secure as well to prevent, um, you know, malicious agents from getting within your network. Um, so Slim is optimized really as a messaging service for agentic communication and everything is kind of MLS encrypted by default and it's built on gRPC for low latency. So that's a bit of a thing that what we're doing in, in the transport space. But we're also looking at agent observability, how do we measure the right attributes from these agents? Um, actually, at Splunk's most recent Conf25 um, conference that they just had, um, we talked about how Splunk and agency are working together to provide this piece of the puzzle and give you agent observability right in your Splunk dashboard. And um, obviously, security is a big piece. Uh, I talked about it a little bit in Slim, but we're looking at it in uh, other pieces of the puzzle as well. Um, and along with DNS, which is our agent directory, you need a certificate authority, right? So you, oh. when you look up an agent, you want to know whether it's been secured, whether the publisher is trusted and verified and are who they say they are. So we're working on all of these different pieces um, along with our partners to ensure that these agentic networks can kind of grow and scale without concern. And as I mentioned, each of these different components is all open source, right? All the work that we're doing. So these are different GitHub repositories that are public. And we want developers to get involved. We want them to, you know, take a look at the code, give us feedback, have an opinion, ask questions, uh, and, you know, drive productive conversations about where the Internet of Agents should be heading. Um, so my action statement is really for developers to go and try it out. Uh, we also have a reference app, which is what I work on personally, called Coffee Agency, which combines a lot of these different pieces together in a supply chain reference example 
uh, coffee supply chain to be exact, because we all need coffee to survive. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's a great place to get started. And it shows you even a clear code um, on how to go ahead and implement these things within your own agentic applications. I, I'm pretty sure you're gonna show some really cool demo of the app um, or the agent that you you have. The question for you, and I have a bunch of questions, but like I, I know we're limited on time. From a transport, at the transport level, uh, you, you mentioned that there's Slim. Is that something that is in parallel to like an MCP support as well for for agency itself, or does it does it support that protocol? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, what we've done is separate out like the agentic protocol, like A two A, like MCP, ACP, and then the transport, right, which is Slim. And Slim supports all the industry standards, so it does support MCP and it does support A two A. What's cool about this is even though there's new new things in it. They're, the concepts are very similar to what we expect through HTTP and HTTPS. So for our snackers out there that are used to the networking engagement, um, we're not jumping too far out of the realm of conceptually of what's there. So that's the exciting part for it. Aditi, would you mind showing us the demo? Um, unfortunately, we are getting a little short on time and I'm excited to, to show our snackers what you built. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to walk you through quickly the demo. So this is our coffee agency reference application. And this is a supply chain example that demonstrates a coffee exchange agent, which is a supervisor that talks to different farms in order to fulfill coffee orders. So it utilizes different agency components as well as, you know, industry standards like we spoke, MCP, A2A, to show interoperability and how you can mix and match between them. So Lungo is our ever-growing demo application. So it has a supervisor agent, as you can see at the top, and it has three farms at the bottom. Um, and these farms are part of our supply chain example. And right now we have three, but we expect this number to grow uh, as we show different agentic protocols and implementations for a variety of different examples. But in terms of what exists, the flow of agents is this, right? So I make a request either to request information on coffee inventory or creating a coffee order. And that request goes straight to the coffee supervisor that you can see at the top of this chart and then passes it uh, into its lane graph. Uh, the lane graph then routes the request either to an inventory road or an orders road. And depending on the nature of my request, uh, the supervisor either makes a broadcast request via pub sub to all farms or a one to one uh, request response call to a specific farm for information. So if I, for example, request, um, let's use one of the suggested prompts, um, what yields do the farms have? It's going to make a broadcast request to all the farms to ask for their current yield. And uh, something to know is that our Columbia farm actually has an MCP uh, server connected to it. So it's an MCP client as well as being an A2A agent. Um, and that MCP server returns the weather of the location at the current moment. Um, so using that information, the Columbia farm agent is actually calculating its yield. And that that call uh, is also done over Slim in our in our deployed instance. But if I request, you know, how much coffee exists in the Columbia farm, the supervisor will make that same request for yield to the Columbia farm via the request response. So this is really showing off the benefits of using Slim as a transport. You can go one to one or one to many. And so we're kind of exemplifying how Slim can tackle all of these different agentic patterns. Um, you might notice these different validated uh, and non-validated badges here next to the farm names. And this is an indication of whether or not the identity of the agent has been registered with agent's agent identity service, ah, cool. which works across a variety of different identity providers. And the agent identity service is our hub in terms of managing these agent identities and providing uh, security around it. So as we talked earlier, our, our certificate authority around these different agents. Um, so two of our farms have been verified and registered with the agent identity service and our Brazil farm has not. Um, so if I try to make um, a request to our Brazil farm and I say, you know, I need 50 pounds of coffee beans from Brazil for let's say 50 cents per pound. And I try to create an order. It should go through our identity service um, and it's gonna go ahead and check to see uh, if it has a badge and the badge could not be found or verified. So the order request failed. So this is an example of how we're using agencies identity service and Slim within our demo app. This is really cool. 
<laughs> yeah, it is really cool. Actually, Aditi, unfortunately, we are at time and I would love for you to come back and start. We What would be really neat, I think, for me would be to start to peek under the hood um, at the implementations of the, the separate agents where we're actually leveraging the framework of agency specifically. Um, but you've definitely got me intrigued because we are at time, though, and you are a new guest. Uh, we do have to ask you this very specific question. Uh, which superpower would you uh, like to have and why? I would actually say that the supervisor I would like to have, uh, oh, sorry, the, su <laughs> the superpower <laughs> I would like to have is uh, like incredible memory. Oh. Because I think for me, um, just being able to, there's so much to learn, I think, in the world. And I just would love to mm -hmm. remember everything that I've learned and, you know, build my mental map. Um, and I think with super memory, it, it would be incredible to, to remember all my memories, to learn about the world and all the people that I've gotten to meet. It's a really cool one. Yeah, I like that one. Aditi, well, I will remember to invite you back to uh, a, a future Snack Minute so we can dig more into the uh, how we build these agents, because I think that's where Snackers would be very interested to see that. Thank you so much, Snackers, for this week. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And uh, this this has been a great demo. I, I know I, I have a bunch of questions and I'm excited to start using this and just playing with it and its capabilities. So thank you for sharing with us uh, all of this, Aditi. Um, thank you, Snackers. Thank you for having me.